Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Because we've recently tested the Toyota Highlander Hybrid, we've got it in the garage here today and we're going to do a deep underhood tour showing all the major components and do-it-yourself maintenance points. The 2020 to 2023 Toyota Highlander Hybrid features the latest generation of the brand's venerable hybrid synergy drive system, well proven. Here, there's a 2.5 liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder gasoline engine with D4S fuel injection, which features both direct and port fuel injection. The engine features a relatively high 14.1 to 1 compression ratio and variable valve timing and can run on regular unleaded fuel or higher. It's mated to an electric continuously variable transmission with two motors, one as the main traction motor, the other primarily as a starter and generator. It produces a total of 243 system horsepower in both front wheel drive models and all wheel drive, where an additional electric drive motor is provided at the rear axle. The system power is limited by software and its high voltage battery output, not so much the cumulative outputs of its individual components. Following the airflow, the air intake charge comes through a snorkel at the top of the radiator to a small air filter box mounted low on the driver's side. From there, it flows through a mass airflow sensor and into a drive-by-wire throttle body and then into the composite plastic intake manifold at the front of the engine. At the top of the manifold, you can see its fuel injection components for its port fuel injection, but the majority of its direct fuel injection components are hidden below its composite plastic valve cover. At the top of the engine, you can see all four of its spark plug coil packs. Once the combustion process takes place, exhaust exits at the rear of the engine through a tubular exhaust manifold and directly into the catalyst system. Doing your own maintenance on the Highlander Hybrid is as straightforward as any conventional gasoline model. It's best to stay clear of the bright orange high voltage wiring as handling it incorrectly can be very dangerous. It's generally not user serviceable anyway. Checking the oil is done at the front center of the engine, the bright yellow dipstick well visible. The oil filler cap is located at the top of the engine valve cover. Both are accessible with the plastic engine sound cover on or off. Coolant reservoirs for both the engine and the hybrid drive system can be found at the passenger side of the engine compartment. The engine coolant reservoir is the one at the left, the hybrid drive system coolant to the right. They both use the same type of coolant. The brake fluid reservoir can be found at the driver's side near the strut tower, remotely located from the electronically controlled brake motor unit. Adjacent to it is the main engine ECU. Just ahead of both is the main fuse panel, which can be easily accessed with a fuse removal tool provided inside. The main engine air filter box is located at the front driver's side of the engine compartment. Changing the filter can be done easily without tools. The windshield washer fluid is found just ahead of the main air filter box with the cap located near the radiator support. Looking around the engine compartment, you'll notice that there's no 12 volt battery located here. You'll find it behind an access panel in the rear cargo compartment. Also notable is the large electric cooling fan at the radiator. Watch your hands when working around this, even when the engine is powered off. All right, my friends, there you have it for the underhood tour of the Toyota Highlander Hybrid. These are very fuel efficient, rated at around 35, 36, depending on whether you get all wheel drive or front wheel drive. And you can see our test drive of this right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right there. Either way, stay tuned.